Hi everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie sound tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover attenuation, spatialization, occlusion and the Doppler effect. So what are these things? Let's say you're a hunter being trained by her father in the ways of the hunt. You hear an animal. Wait for it. How do you know where that sound came from? Well, you know this because that sound carries a lot of data your brain can interpret. That's the last of them. Let's move on. Assuming you have two ears, one ear will pick up a sound a fraction a second before the other does, which lets your brain position that sound. If a sound is continuous or repeated, you'd hear it getting louder well, as you get closer to it, see or hear and quieter you. as you move further away. You can tell if a sound is coming from behind a closed door, and over time you subconsciously learn how sound behaves when it's fully or partially blocked by another object. And some critics do fear that the franchise will take a radical departure from the source material. Only time will tell, but at least... There. And finally, say so you left your home and found yourself spread eagled in the hood of a white 1970s Dodge Challenger. Between gasping for breath and wondering what the hell was going on, you might realise that as other cars spin off the road around you, the sound travels less distance when they're closer, and more distance when they're further away. <laughs> We can use all of these effects to build detailed sound environments for players, providing information about the world we've created, leading players to points of interest, and keeping them on track. And while it's easy to see how these effects can benefit three-dimensional games, all of these effects can be used in 2D games as well. At its most basic, attenuation in the Unreal Engine is a pair of spheres that change the volume of the sound. Outside of both spheres, you can't hear anything. Between the spheres you hear the sound, which gradually gets louder as you move from the outer to the inner sphere, and inside the inner sphere the sound is played at full volume. So I'm going to use these settings. For attenuation function, I'm using linear. This is the way the volume is going to behave as we move between the spheres. More on that in a moment. For the attenuation shape, I'm going to use a sphere. This can be a box or a capsule or a cone. I'm going to set the inner radius to 650 and the falloff distance to 1800. The inner radius is the inner sphere, and the falloff distance is the edge of the outer sphere. Extra options appear if we select different shapes, allowing us to customize the volumes, and if we select the natural sound function, we get an option to set the sound's volume in decibels when the player is at the outermost edge of the attenuation shape. Different functions influence how the sound behaves as we move away from the source. Which one is best depends on the sound you're using, and the scene you want to create. So I've added my sound cue to this overview map. Um, I've created that by capturing some synth pads in Cubase and then I've imported them into UE4 as 16-bit 44.1 kHz WAVs. And I've laid them like this. With a delay in the upper strand, that means the sounds will sit on top of each other fairly randomly, creating some nice harmonies. If we make sure that we're not selecting any of the nodes in the audio cue, and scroll down the panel on the left hand side until you see virtualization mode under voice management. I've changed this to play when silent. That means that UE4 will keep playing the sound even though we've moved away and can't hear it anymore. This can be useful for looping Look ambiences where you don't want the sound triggered from the beginning oh, each time the player know. comes within range. It's also useful for NPC audio so lines passive. if you allow it's players like to move away mass. from and then Wait, return to the speaking character. Here? If we walk past the outer sphere towards the centre, you can hear the sounds getting louder, and they fade as you move further away. If we walk past the outer sphere towards the centre, you can hear that the sounds are louder, and they fade as we move away. If we use the console command stat audio, you can see that even when we've moved out of the attenuation radius, the sounds are still playing. So that we don't stress the player's system, we can use a concurrency setting to limit how many sounds of the same type are playing at the same time, something we can cover in another video. Before we move on to spatialization, let's have a quick look at attenuation shapes. A sphere is going to be the most natural option because sounds in the real world are transmitted equally in all directions from their source. They'll encounter obstacles, and to some extent we can mimic that behaviour using occlusion. 
But if your game has lots of square rooms, a sphere might cause unwanted overlaps into other spaces. So a box might be better instead. A cone might be more appropriate for a tannoy or a loudspeaker. And a capsule might be best for something like a mountainside or a mineshaft if your character is climbing or falling to their death. You could also use a capsule at the edge of buildings to simulate traffic outside. As always, getting a better understanding about how these systems work is a mixture of playing with them and paying attention to what happens to sounds in the real world around you. It also depends on the game you're trying to make and the effects you want to create. There are two demos at the end of this video where I'll show you how I've used these effects to create two very different scenes. Labelled Attenuation Spatialization in Unreal Engine, this allows us to position sounds around the player. That's useful for loads of reasons. Lots of items in the world from animals and people to rocket fire, cars, flaming torches, checkpoints, a lot of things. Spatialization and attenuation won't work well for things like continuous background music or ambient loops. Those sounds are best placed in the world without these settings applied. We have four options for spatialization. Panning is the default, and that'll move sounds from left to right across the player's speakers. We can decide how the sounds fade from left to right by going to the project settings, engine, audio, quality, and clicking the little arrow. The default is linear panning. This means that as the sound fades in one speaker, it'll rise by an equal amount in the other speaker. That's fine, but it can mean that the crossover is abrupt. To get a smoother blend, we can use equal power. This means the sound being spatialized will stay at the same perceived volume regardless of which speaker it's being panned to. The binaural option uses a plugin you've chosen to control spatialization. Go to Project Settings, Audio, Spatialization Plugin. The UE4 manual says this method requires playback over headphones as binaural panning doesn't work well over loudspeakers. This is the distance at which the sound stops being spatialized. If the player can get close to the sound, this will stop the sound spinning left and right as they make small adjustments to the camera, camera position and orientation. If we have a large sound, like a waterfall or a huge machine, we can increase this radius to give the impression of greater size. We perceive a waterfall's peak volume when we're near it, we don't have to be inside it. UE4 will also bleed sounds from the left and right speakers into the other speakers if the player is using a surround sound system. This is the distance between the right and left speakers when the sounds are spatialized in the game world. This can have the effect of narrowing or widening the sound. This toggles a 6 decibel reduction in stereo sounds that are being spatialized in the game. It can be useful if sounds are clipping. In the overview map, I've set up a torch. You can see from the green spheres that it also has attenuation applied. If I walk up to the sound, I hear this. And if I pan the camera, I hear this. Now it's important to note that we can set where the player's virtual ear is. We can set where sounds are going to be received. If we open up the third person character blueprint, you can see that I set up uh, an event begin play node and connected that to a set audio listener override node. The target is the player controller and I have a few different things here that I can set as the ear. The moment it's set to the follow camera, but if it changes to the mesh itself, now we can hear the sounds pan left and right depending on where the character is facing. Where you want the sounds to be received will depend on your overall game design. Bear in mind that using the camera can create some issues as the camera could be inside an attenuation sphere before the player mesh. If the player character is just outside one of these volumes, panning the camera might trigger sounds that you don't yet want the player to hear. I personally prefer to use the mesh, but I think there's scope here for a system that blends both, depending on the player character's location and orientation relative to the sound source. It's perhaps something we could cover in another video. It's probably safe to say that everyone knows the sound would be different if you're listening to it through a closed door. This is because higher frequencies scatter more easily and can be absorbed by objects, whereas lower frequencies are better able to pass through objects.
By default, this is set to visibility. It's basically a trace between the sound source and the player. If there's anything in the way, the occlusion settings will be applied. Make sure you have collision set up on your objects. You can customize the collision parameters to ignore certain actors if you need to. I've done that here, where the central pillar blocks everything except the visibility channel. I've placed the sound cue inside the pillar so that sounds are emitted evenly across this little scene. A low pass filter or LPF allows lower frequencies to pass through the filter. The lower this value is, the more frequencies we're going to cut away and the more obvious that will be. The default of 20,000 Hz is too high because it's essentially the highest frequency humans can hear. Definitely consider your target audience. As people age, they're less able to hear high frequency sounds. People in their 40s may have an upper hearing range of only 15,000 Hz, while most people are sensitive to sounds in the 2,000 to 5,000 Hz range. And that's because, generally, that's where our everyday sounds are heard. As an interesting fact, drinking alcohol reduces your ability to hear high frequencies. It's important to know all of this because it gives us an idea about how much of the sound we can strip away. For occlusion, I recommend frequencies around and below 2,500 Hz. If you want to simulate a specific material or a thickness, you can go down to 250 or even 150 Hz. As always, play around with this setting and invite others to test it before launch. This increases or decreases the volume during occlusion. Lower is the natural behavior of an occluded sound. For this example, I've used 0.45. This is how long it will take for the occlusion to be applied once it's triggered by the trace. The default is 0.1, but for this scene, I found that a little too abrupt. A slightly longer interpolation, say 0.25, helps the blend feel more natural. This is a tricky setting, as it's not easy to get a natural blend here, and it's one that you're gonna to have to play around with. Game objects have simple collision and complex collision. Simple collision for objects that have holes in them might not create the audio effect you're after. Complex collision will be better in those cases, allowing sound to pass more naturally around and through the object. This is going to cost more in terms of computer resources, so unless it's necessary to your vision, stick with simple. The best way to demonstrate occlusion is to occlude. So here we have our sound in the center, and here we have four pillars surrounding that that are gonna block the sound as we move around it. the black pillars you can hear the upper frequencies being cut. That's with a setting of 2500 for the lower pass filter, so let's try that again with that set to 150. stronger effect. Where to use this effect depends on your game. If your game's set in a city, then you're going to apply the low pass filter to some ambient sounds before you even import them into UE4. Using the occlusion settings is really only going to be useful if you want them to be dynamic, if you want those settings to change depending on the player's position relative to the sound source. So do some thinking about what sounds really need it. This was interesting because I had to change the setup of the third person character blueprint to get the complex collision occlusion to work effectively with a windowed wall. As you can see, I've added a small box in front of the player and I've routed the listener override to that. This was because using the player mesh wasn't right for complex occlusion. Although the head was at the window, the feet weren't. And UE4 must look at the whole mesh when using the listener override alongside the occlusion effect. Adding a small component, which I've attached to the head, and which we can make invisible, is going to better simulate the effect of the sound on the player character's ears. The settings here are just a variation on what we had earlier. This is what the wall looks like with complex collision visible in the mesh viewer, and this is what it sounds like. The Doppler effect is one of the most recognizable sounds in everyday life. It's pretty ubiquitous. So let's jump in and hear what it sounds like. <laughs> 
UE4 has a pretty straightforward node to allow us to do this. If we open one of the engine queues, all we need to do is add the Doppler node. The default intensity is set to 1, and that changed it to 0.5 here because I felt 1 was too intense for this scene. Again, this is something you can mess around with. Think about the sound you're applying it to, the likely relative speed, and the scene you're trying to create. In this cave scene, we have the crystals with an attenuated but not spatialized sound, a few torches with attenuation and spatialization, and some orb plants set up like the crystals with slightly different attenuation parameters. We also have a background ambient wind, and I'm using audio classes and a mixer to control the sound levels at the start of the game. In this desert scene, we have a large pyramid with attenuation. We've got some hover cars flying past on both sides. Occlusion's been applied to the engines, so we get a shuttered effect when we stand behind the pillars. We also have a Millennium Falcon with a very rudimentary flight animation, so sorry about that, and very basic attenuation and spatialization settings that are updated by timeline in a pretty crude fashion to simulate a huge vehicle powering up and taking off. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found that useful. Take care and good luck with your projects.